We want to continue the series on oppositional defiant disorder and looking at it now through a biblical counseling lens. How can we help, help families and children who have received this diagnosis? How to respond neuthenically? Well, we need to determine if the child is saved. What we mean by that is, does the child have a personal relationship with his or her creator God through Jesus Christ? This is the source of change. If the child is not saved, then you have removed all genuine possibility of lasting change and you are now camped in the realm of psychology with the label, with the various treatments that if this doesn't work we will try this and the hopelessness that comes through all of that experimentation for treatment. So we need to determine if the child is saved. We need to gather data. You can do this through logs. Uh, who, what, when, where, and how are some basic questions that are very important. Keep a log of when the child is defiant. What is going on? What is the situation? Has the child eaten? Has the child had sufficient rest? Are there siblings involved in the situation? Uh, parents do a lot of data gathering here to determine if one, the parents are exasperating the child, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 that says you should not be doing that. If there is favoritism in the home and the child who is labeled feels or in actuality that there is parental prejudice that is taking place, the logs are going to give you a tremendous amount of information as you work with this family. We need to provide hope. What is going on here is not a disease. In the previous uh, uh, videos, training videos, I hope that you have uh, viewed, it has been clearly stated by the experts, by psychology, that there is no known cause for this situation. They do not know what prompts this. They believe it could be environmental. In other words, the home environment, the school environment where the child is living but it is not a disease. Therefore, because it is not a disease, it is a sin issue that Christ died for. As a conclusion of great hope, change comes then inwardly, not outwardly. Arranging the environment around the child to where there is no conflict does not deal with the brooding and the brewing that is taking place in that child. This is great hope that we are not dealing with a disease. There are solutions that last. We need to establish a neuthetic concept of authority to both parent and a child. A neuthetic concept means what does God's Word have to say about parenting and about being a child and what the relationships should be like, what they should look like, who is in charge, what does submission mean, what does respect mean? What does authority mean? We have to go back and revisit these issues with an absolute source, not the ever-changing of psychology, but the absolute source of the Word of God. What does it say about these issues? We need to investigate potential pre-conditioning factors. In other words, is there something going on in the home environment that could be exasperating the situation? Now, the next two charts we viewed in a previous video, and we will go through them very quickly. Remember, we had talked about the sin nature and the sin nurture, and that clashing, going to the family doctor, getting the label, and then we have two branches on how we're going to treat the situation. The sin nurturing is a preconditioning factor. How are the parents' unbiblical parenting creating an environment to stimulate? the sinful nature of the child as opposed to righteousness. We also took a look at this chart with explanation before. If you need to, click on that video and refresh yourself. We continue on how to respond neuthetically. Secure a behavior log to determine specific causes, routine situations, etc. We need to take a look at the parenting style. Do we have an authoritarian parent, this is my way, um, overbearing, 
not not understanding the uniqueness of that child? Do we have a permissive parent that allows anything to go? Do we have an authoritative parent to where they are learning and the child is learning because the source is the Word of God? We need to provide helpful uh, to institute a family roundtable to resolve problems. Teach the family how to come together, how to talk, how to be respectful, and how to solve problems within the family structures. This is a great opportunity for children supposedly with ODD to, to be able to express their frustration with a sibling and get a hearing on the situation and everybody come to the Word of God on how to resolve it. Specifically work with a child when he or she first rises in the morning. Okay, what, what is our goal today? Our goal is to please God in what we say and what we do. And throughout the day, what did I want more than glorifying God? Um, when there is a defiant episode and we take the time to work through it, what did that child want more than glorifying God? And then before going to bed, well, how, do I, how did I do? Let's do some evaluation here. Uh, what areas were good? What areas did I demonstrate self-control in? Uh, what areas did I fail in and why? And how can I improve that for tomorrow? And then develops discipline and structure. Many times with, with the, the nurture of the home, there is lack of discipline and structure that has taken place in this child's life. And there is this unchecked freedom of selfishness that goes on that needs the discipline and the structure. Many times the parents themselves are not disciplined and structured. And then parental consistency. If lying is wrong, then lying is wrong. And it doesn't matter whether the four-year-old lie, lied or whether it's the 11-year-old. It's not cute to be disrespectful when you're four years old. And it's, it's something that the 12-year-old gets clobbered for. There needs to be parental consistency. The parental consistency comes through the study and the implementa implementation of God's word. Some other nuthetic counseling topics that will come up that you'll have to deal with will be the anger of the child and the parents, resentment that uh, will be building there, how to solve conflict, how do we resolve conflict, uh, communication, how do we talk, how do we listen, how do we show respect in the way we speak to each other, our tone, our words, even the timing. Selfishness is a part of ODD as well as pride. And then everybody needs to learn to become a servant in the family structure. I have a theory that if we have two servants working together, uh, they're going to try to outserve each other and there won't be too much competition or fighting. Here are some resources. In particular, in the area of communication, I would recommend The War of Words by Paul Tripp. And then Your Family, God's Way by, Way by Wayne Mack. There is about nine chapters, beginning in Chapter 4 or Unit 2 in this book, that are completely dedicated to communication. Uh, there's Bible studies at the back of each one of those cha uh, chapters. Basic Child Raising, Heart of Anger by Lou Perillo. Uh, Teach Them Diligently by the same author. Age of Opportunity is more towards teens by Paul Tripp, but it's got some valuable information on how to react to the changeableness in our young people's lives. And then Shepherding a Child's Heart is, is for Younger Children by Paul Tripp. As a general resource, I would recommend Homework Volumes 1 through 3 by Wayne Mack. For more information on uh, this or other areas that Mount Carmel Ministry offers, articles, uh, webinars, different things like this, uh, go to our website at www.mountcarmelmin.org.